the history of market recessions and downturns, none was ever like the one faced in 2020. Now, because of COVID-19, businesses had to either shut for good or forced to evolve as engagement with product and service transactions shifted dramatically. It wasn't like an asset bubble that popped, uh, like what we experienced during the global financial crisis or dot-com bubble. Fast forward nine months from March, the world is now looking at a vaccine breakthrough in hope of a return to some form of normality, both in our daily lives and livelihood. So as we look forward to 2021, global GDP is expected to expand significantly due to the low base effect in 2020. This optimism will be carried by various government support either through cash handouts to the unemployed, government projects announcements, loan moratorium extensions and low interest rates. As it stands, the US is still working towards crafting a government spending bill while at the same time maintaining an ultra-low interest rate policy. The appointment of Ms. Janet Yellen as Treasury Secretary reinforces our earlier expectations uh, that fiscal spending will provide the momentum for growth. Across the Atlantic, ECB President Christian Lagarde has cautioned that inflation is likely to remain negative in 2021 as fresh COVID lockdowns in the fourth quarter of 2020 swept across the continent. Already, the economic recovery is at risk of losing momentum more rapidly, and the ECB highlighted that it will recalibrate its interest rate policy tools to cushion this impact. Within our regional shores, Fitch has downgraded Malaysia's credit rating from single A- to triple B+, citing a wider fiscal deficit in 2020. But this was largely expected, given the negative outlook placed earlier this year. Malaysia's budget deficit will remain wider into 2021 as policymakers remain supportive of local economic growth with a net spending of negative 5.4% of GDP. Similarly, the budget deficit expectations for Indonesia is forecasted to be at 5.6% for 2021, while Thailand, on the other hand, is at 4.9%. On a monetary policy perspective, central banks around the world are expected to maintain their low interest rate position for 2021, while some ASEAN governments like Indonesia and Malaysia still have the ability to drive interest rates lower due to the large real rate environment, we will likely see this policy to remain unchanged unless the economic recovery falls short. Despite COVID-19, the performance of fixed income assets have been exceptional due to the decline in central bank policy rates. For example, Asian US dollar denominated bonds returned close to about 5.5% year to date. In Malaysia, a typical corporate bond portfolio has returned roughly between 5 to 6% in performance, while Indonesia and Thailand returned close to 12% and 2% respectively. The government spending is a key driver of the size of bond issuances for 2021. Despite the larger issuance size, there are a few mitigating factors which will help alleviate this incoming supply. Number one, support from one-off contributions from GLC and corporates, which will help reduce the amount of issuances needed. Number two, sustained demand from local and offshore investors for fixed income products, given the uncertainty surrounding the recovery of 2021. Number three, we see central banks' involvement on local currency bond market to be present in 2021, providing a backstop to unexpected volatility. Also, with the US elections out of the way, we expect emerging market assets to be relatively more attractive considering developed market yields are locked in negative or close to negative rates. This will probably drive fund flows into the EM region such as Asia given its attractiveness in relative bond yields and effectiveness in controlling COVID-19 infections. Local currency bond yields are already trading close to all-time lows. Hence, we expect local investors to shift demand for corporate bonds given that, number one, valuations are more attractive as compared to government bonds since government bonds have been rallying on the back of interest rate cuts. Number two, improving economic fundamentals will prompt investors to selectively relook into taking more credit risk. With that in mind, excess returns from fixed income assets, whether in hard or local currency, are expected to be driven by corporate bond positioning. Our local currency sovereign bond play would likely be on a trading basis for the first quarter of 2021.